Boards and booze, booze and boards, drink some beers, fight some hordes, drank too much, forgot our swords, ran back home, filled our gourds, got drunk again, sang some chords, boards and booze, booze and boards, with Mickey and Jeb. Here we are again. Booze and boards, Mickey and Jeb. Yep. Uh, Mickey, you want to hold up the, the box with the game that no, we have? No box today, something totally different. <laughs> okay, so we're trying something new here yep. um, that we haven't... We, we haven't, we, like, we literally, as of this recording, we just thought about doing this today. Yeah, like six hours ago, yeah. Mickey's like, Jeff, hey. have you seen this Kickstarter? <laughs> and right. I'm like, what is it? And okay. So that's what this is, believe it or not. This pile of paper here is a Kickstarter. Um, and so what we're going to do, because it's it's supposed to be a, a solo, self-contained P&P, which is pen and paper game. I thought it was print and play. Print and, print and play, pen and paper, it's all the same thing. Because, right, it's all, it's all good. And um, I was like, well, wait a second. I printed it out, read it. The rules are pretty straightforward, and it's Kickstarter going on right now. So we were like, we get let's, this up, see yeah, let's, let's try to uh, promote it a little bit. Um, so anyways, the, the name of it is uh, A4 Quest, and again, it is literally all on paper so these are the I know you can't see this real well but these are the rules and then what's really cool on one piece of paper is the whole game board that's a whole session right yep. there and then you have another piece of paper with your character on the top and your uh, stats and stuff on the but this is your board and this is your stats and stuff for your character alright uh, so I know you can't see that real well. So, anyways, that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna do, and we'll be back in just a second, and we'll show you some close ups or you know closer up of these papers, and we'll go over because um, you're looking at the components, yeah. <laughs> pretty much for the most part. Um, but we'll we'll go through all that real quick, and then we'll we're gonna play it at least a few rounds of this, and uh, show you how it works. All right. Okay, so we're back. And uh, so this is going to be real quick in terms of components. So what you have here is basically a rule book for A4 Quest. We're going to get a little bit more into the details of the Kickstarter during the review, but just want to show you quick rule book, three pages. It's got some examples, tells you what the symbols mean, and then literally, and this is the uh, this is right from the Kickstarter page. You can print this out to try it. Yep. So this is already in existence. I think this exists on BGG too. I know I keep calling this A4 Quest, but the Kickstarter is actually called Page Quest because yeah. it's building on this system. Yeah. Um, so this is literally when you print it out, this is a is a scenario. This one's called First Journey into the Abyss. This is everything you need, exactly what you need to uh, be able to play the game. And then behind that is a character. Um, the printout that is on the Kickstarter includes three different journeys. See this one, this one, and this one. And then that character, which is a paladin. And this character, who is an archer. And then the one that I showed you at the beginning, which is a knight. So, so that's it. So... Uh, in terms of components, the only other thing you need is you need, well, it tells you what you're, you're, you're going to need for each, each character, but you'll need uh, dice. I think, believe the first one is five. Uh, it'd be nice to have four of the same color and then one of a different color just for tracking purposes, which we'll, we'll show you in just a minute when we go into setup. And then some sort of marker for these spots on here. You could even use a pencil and just add in a race as you played the game. I think they Martin, even mentioned you could use pennies or something like yeah, that. Yeah, anything. So. Just anything. So literally you should be able to play this game with whatever you have available. Yeah. Um, and if you don't have dice, you can even use like a dice app on your phone or something. True. Yeah. You you could do that, but do a lot of them let you roll multiples mm -hmm. at the same time? The one I have lets oh, you pick how many you want to roll. How many you want to roll. So awesome. Uh, I don't use a dice app, so I wouldn't. I don't. I don't know about that. So anyways, that's it. So, 
um, what we can do right now is we're going to jump right into basically uh, how, how this works. First thing you have to do for setup is print the game adventure sheet. Which, which is, we just showed you, it is a game adventure sheet. And then you print any chosen hero sheet. So. Which would be one of those. Uh, next you're going to prepare 5d6. Right. So again, here's 4 and 1. Then you are going to put one of the dice, which is going to be called the adventure die, next to you. So wherever, just off this side. And then the other four dice are the hero dice, and we'll be creating a pool for the hero, so you just put that near the hero, I guess. All right. All right. You're going to need six markers and one pawn or character marker. So okay, so I grabbed uh, six wooden markers out of another game, um, and I grabbed this... Mini that I actually got in a Chibi paint swap, which it came out really cool. Look at that. <laughs> so, anyways, so yep. He actually starts there. Okay. Next up, uh, you are going to mark on your character sheet with the markers that you have uh, the start attack value, defense value, health points, experience, crystals, and food. Okay. Um, they list them exactly down the sheet on your character where they go, but also on the character uh, setup they're actually highlighted on the starting number so it's really really easy to find out what your starting numbers are they're they're it's very clearly highlighted on the sheet where they go so um, this is your attack it starts for the knight it starts at two his defense starts at two his health starts at five his food starts at one his crystals start at zero, and his experience starts at zero. That's it. All right, then you're going to place the, the marker or meeple that you're using uh, next to the first tile on the adventure sheet, so not actually on it. Okay, so I'll explain real quick. The adventure sheet, um, when they talk about tiles, it's the section, okay? Within these tiles are spaces. If you can see them, they're divided by lines. Now... On your adventure, you're going to snake like this, just so you know. Or, yeah, I did that right. Okay. No. I, <laughs> this, that. Uh, you, you, I keep seeing. You, you keep going like this. It's, it's, it's a, like reading a page a, on a book, right? It's a snake, but I'm not, it's not, doesn't come back this way. Right. I'm trying to go and then sneak back across here. So it's going across like that. Yeah. All right. Okay. Sorry. Jeb thinks I'm an idiot. Okay. <laughs> All right, and then you get to choose one piece of additional equipment, which is visible on your character sheet. And I believe that's this box right here. That's correct. So you can either choose, an, for this character, you can choose an additional shield, additional attack, or two meat. Which is food. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> what do you want to take, Jim? Uh, I like killing stuff, so let's go with attack. So we're going we're gonna to be able to start at a three attack. Yeah. It's at the beginning of the game, you roll the four dice, and that's your dice pool. For, to start with, yeah. yeah. And if you look on here, there's also a setup thing that... Uh, very, very clear. I guess next we just need to talk about gameplay. Yep. So let's just jump right in. All right, so next up, we're going to talk about the turn order. So the turns are very simple in this game. <laughs> it doesn't get more simple than this. The first thing you do is movement, which is mandatory. The next thing you do is encounter, and that only happens if there's an enemy in the space that you just moved into. And then the last thing you do is you either choose to do one action or rest. And then once you finish the action or do the rest, then you start another turn. So turn order, super simple. All right, so let me uh, just kind of show you guys what... Jeb means by all that, not that it was too difficult, but I'll show you in terms of how the board operates, what all that means. So if it's my turn, and again, this is a solo game, so you, you're just trying to win for yourself here, all right? So I have to move. So I'm off the board, so I move in to the first space. I look at this space, and the first thing I do is look for one of these monster icons. These are monster icons, the skull. They're red, they're very bold. The black skull is the boss, obviously, he's at the very end. There is no monster icon in here, so now, if you remember what Jeb said, I don't fight an enemy because there's no monster in here, 
now I need now I have to perform an action or rest no choice I have to do one or the other in order to perform an action I look at the icons the other icons that aren't monster on on the space and then I choose from one of those um, I won't get into exact all of them right now but a couple key, other key things to remember is that um, some of the icons can have a modifier for instance this treasure chest here which is a search action has a minus two those are going to come into play when you roll the dice for or use dice for things okay so I would pick an icon I would resolve that action which we'll get into in a minute and then it would go back to movement there is one thing about movement if you're on a space that has that it's like a purple icon right. that has a dice and then a right. number that right. has to be greater than exactly reward. so normally movement within spaces doesn't cost you a die to use right. this however means to get to this next space I must use a die to do it so hopefully you understand movement if you don't it's pretty clear in the rules but you know unless this icons here you have to move forward you can't just stop in a space so if you're looking at this board yeah when you get to perform actions you're only gonna get to perform one so you gotta be you, like you gotta have a strategy for this game alright so let's the second thing that Jeb said is that you check for an enemy well the first base doesn't have an enemy so let's pretend we moved all the way to here and we have an enemy in this space right here okay so here's an enemy now what happens when I encounter an enemy? Well, I take the adventure die, which is the one that we set aside, not from my pool. Okay, um, let's get, we're going to get rid of this four, just be, so I want you to see the pool depleting. That represented me moving out of here, just because, so you have a, a little bit of flavor. <laughs> All right, so um, now I'm at an enemy, and I check, and you know, oh, there's an enemy. So now I take the adventure die, and I roll it. Okay, that's a one on this die. And I then I consult this this chart down here. One to three, no enemy appears. See this chart here where there's actually an attack uh, a defensive number and an attack number. That means that's the kind of enemy that that comes out. However, some of these spaces, as you can see down here, have little numbers plus numbers below them. If I was in one of these, I would have to add this number to the die. Alright? So, I'm gonna... Let's re-roll so a monster actually yep. appears. <laughs> so, that's what we're gonna do. Alright, a All right. five. We got a big old five. So No modifier. Right. So, so, it stays at a five. You look at the chart. There's a five. monster at five, and it has three defense and three attack for now. Now, at this point, you, the hero have to choose one of your die to use for the upcoming combat the, the defense now this is this three three is not the final number of this monster right so if I take one of these ones mmm that would that would just barely keep me safe if he gets like well actually it doesn't keep me safe at all so just for purposes of this I am going to Use that die, the six. We'll put it right there for now, so you can see it as my defensive die. Now at this point, I roll the adventure die again. Nope. Whoops! Uh, before you do that, you're going to check to see if the monster oh. has a special ability. Right. And at five, the monster does not. not. Special ability be right here. So it's in this scenario, it's only these two down here that have a special ability. Yep. Okay. So, since no special ability, now you re-roll the adventure die. And you get a three. And now that result is going to be added to the stats of the monster. Alright. And when what Jeb means by stats is that this three and this uh, three three monster now becomes a six six monster. Yep. Yes, the three gets added to both the stats. Yep. So, I have a six six monster. And okay. you are looking him in the face, ready to start combat. So, right. the first thing that you do for combat is the monster is going to attack you. 
what you're going to do is compare his attack value, which you've already calculated, to your defense value. And to calculate your defense value, you add your hero's stat and the hero die that you chose for this battle. Right. So I have a 2 defense right now, plus a 6 is an 8. So I block All a 6. Yep. So I don't take any damage. Now, if the enemy's attack value is higher than your defense value, then the difference is done as damage to you. Right. So, if you'd like to see an example of that, let's pretend for a moment Use that I only got a 1. That means my defense would have been a 3. He was attacking for 6. That means the difference between those is 3, and I would have had to reduce this by 3. Yep. Okay? But that didn't happen. <laughs> I, like, <laughs> I used a 6 there. All right. So, after the enemy attacks you, now you, if you survive, you get to attack the enemy back. And to calculate your attack value, you check your hero's stat for attack and add it to the value of the hero die that you chose. Alright, so I have a 3 attack, because Jeb bumped us up one at the beginning, because that's what he chose for a weapon, <laughs> or a item rather. I add it to the 6, and I got a 9. I look at the 9 against his 6 defense. And since it's greater, you're... Uh, destroying him, right? Right. Or, I guess, defeated. And you get rewarded the experience points that are next to his stats on right. the table. So I look over here, I look at, and it's one star, so now I can go over to my experience and bump that up one. Now, if Mickey had a one value, a die with a one value instead of the six, Oh, that would have been sad. <laughs> you add the 1 to the 3, which is a 4, four and the monster he, has a 6 defense. defense. And he runs away, and I get no experience. Right. Points. So that, <laughs> what happens if you can't defeat them, they run away, and then the battle's over. Right. So at the end of that battle, guess what? This die goes bye-bye. Yep. But you got some experience out of it. But so. I did get some experience about it. Okay. Right. So that's everything for combat. So it's pretty it. simple yep. for, for fighting the smaller monsters. We'll get and, into the boss later. And in it Jeb's favorite um, <laughs> favorite thing to say, just do stuff in order, which is actually right here yep. encounter, for the most part. It doesn't yeah. tell you step, step by step, but it's like, okay, encounter, and then the enemy special action, then the enemy attacks first, and then... Uh, uh, time to attack back. So it gives you the order. You still kind of have to know the stuff that we just told you. Yeah. But if you just have that, it's like oh, literally a paragraph on the one sheet of paper, uh, you'll you'll know exactly what to do. So it's check for an enemy, roll to see if uh, check for an enemy, roll to see if one appears, select your hero die, roll for his modifier. Combat commences. Yep. All right, so the last thing on your turn is to either perform an action or rest. Now, there are multiple actions you can do, so let's talk about rest really quick. Okay. Uh, for rest, what you do is you lose one food, and you get to re-roll all of your exhausted hero die and any hero die that you have active as well. So, it, okay. it, right now, Mickey's pool of die is pretty pitiful because it's two ones, so if he decided to rest right now, he would decrease his food right. by one. So I only have one food, yep. so it would go to zero. Then he would collect all of his then inactive I could take dies. these, And I could select any of my still active die to re-roll also when I'm resting. Yep. So I would probably take all of them, obviously, because I have ones, and then I would re-roll them. And then I got even <laughs> worse and rolled three ones. I cannot not roll a one tonight. But... <laughs> Uh, but but now you can see how how the rest works. That was a horrible horrible yeah. rest and a waste of food. But <laughs> I did I did rest and I did I did refresh everything. These are all these are all active again. Yeah. So uh, since he rested, that was the end of his turn. So we go back to movement. If he moves his guy, you can show and him. And then I have to move my guy. There's no monster. So back to 
actions or rest. Right. So this time he's going to do an action because he already rested. Right. So, so I'm going to recap again. And, and I'm going to kind of back it up to kind of show you how this first roll would have worked. I moved into here. I would just get to do one of these actions. The next turn, I, I have to move, so I'd have to have a die to do it. I move into here, no monster, I would just get to do one of these actions. Back to the movement phase. Move into here, encounter a monster. Resolve the battle, assuming I don't die, I get to do an action. Forced to move again, I move over here, no monster, I get to do one of these actions, etc., etc. Do an action or rest. Right. And one thing we forgot to mention is if you're back in the first space, Mickey, yes, sir. and you do not have a die to spend for the movement, what happens is you take one damage and you get to reroll one of your exhausted die. Alright, so we should probably talk about the different actions that you can do on your turn if you choose to do them, right? Yep. Alright, so let's start with Hunt. Since you're on the first space, I think you have a lot of available actions. So if you chose to hunt, you would use one of your hero die and perform the action on the adventure sheet uh, with the appropriate value. So what that means is down here, the green symbol is hunt. So Mickey would spend one of his die. <laughs> and uh, Mickey's going to re-roll these just because he has nothing to show you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so Mickey wants to hunt, so he'll pick one of his die. Ooh. I will take this lowly three. All right, so we look at the hunting chart, and a three has one piece of food next to it. So I would get to go up my food track. Yep, and that's pretty much it for that action. So. Right, but I do want to show you, just because I can, since there's an extra symbol, if I would have taken a six, notice how it's got a food, a food, and a heart. This is important because obviously you know I get the two food. What's the heart mean? You probably figured out that it's life, but I just want to be clear, and I did check with the designer of the game. This is just a starting health. You can go past it. So yes, I would go up to six. And as you, if you saw in the battle thing, there's a lot of potential to lose some hit points. So I would actually probably, since I have another six, I probably would have done that. Taking the extra food for resting. I, got, I can rest three times now, and I've got an extra hit point. Goodbye, six. <laughs> All right, so if you had decided not to hunt, though... Oh, Jeff doesn't want me to hunt. You could have quested, because in his spot there's a quest icon, which is the blue, blue. which is a book in it, I believe. And what you do for questing is use one of your hero die, then roll the adventure die and see the results in the corresponding table, and you get to perform the action that the result is equal to. Okay, now this is the only one that is kind of a little bit different in the fact that it doesn't matter what hero die you take. Yep. So this is kind of your... All I got is ones. <laughs> Can I do anything? Yep. <laughs> so that's what this is. So uh, since three is my lowest, probably if I was going to do the uh, quest one, I would get rid of that. Then I would take the adventure die. I would roll it and then consult the chart to see what I got. So the four, I found some food. Nice. And I would check it up one um, just to go over a few of these different symbols uh, in the off chance that I hit a one it looks like I probably fell in a trap or something Yikes. because I lose a life and the the next one is an enemy with that modifier appears okay and you have to fight them right away uh, so um, I go through this normal enemy yep uh, what am I trying to say tongue tied here Enemy appears, like Jeb said, he has a minus one modifier, though. And when this is a result, it doesn't mean you get an extra action after that battle. It's just saying that your action has now turned into a fight. Right. So, uh, Three, nothing happens. Four, piece of food. Five, I, I, get, I gain an attack or defense, so I could choose which one of these and slide it up on the chat, the track. 
Right? It's got a slash between it, so that's either or, not both. And with a six, I would have found an experience point, and I could have moved that up on the track. Right? So, again, recap the quest one. Pick a hero die, exhaust it, or spend it, or however you want to term it, and then roll the adventure die and hope for the best. Consult the chart. All right, and then the other action you can do is search, which, hey, there's a search action in your spot. So what search is, is you use one of your hero die and perform the described action on the sheet in the table. There is a modifier, <laughs> if there is a modifier, I assume most of them have it, uh, you use that with what your die result is, and then you can figure out what happens. Right, so... Uh, now, this isn't a roll or anything. This is literally taking a die, applying the modifier. This They don't want you to get anything good at the beginning of the adventure <laughs> here. This che this ch treasure chest literally has a minus two modifier. So, let's say I got to spend the six on it. That would convert to a four. Consult the chart. And there's actually a couple... There's two different places where I could spend the four. The three, four, I could gain a life. Or a 4 through 6, I could up my attack. Since I just gained a life, maybe this time, eh, we'll take another attack. That seems to be important. Yep, and uh, just to reiterate, Mickey, Shoo. the 3 to 4 and 4 to, or what is it, 3 to 4 and 3 to 5 things do not overlap. You only get to choose one of the results. Oh, yeah, sorry, I could have used this one, too. I didn't even read it. Jeb's right, 3 to 5. That's, uh, it, that's... A through number, not a either or. Yeah, the key is you don't get all of them. You right. get one. Right. So three to four, I could get a heart. Uh, three to five, I could get a defense. Four to six, I could get um, an attack. So yeah. spending a six die, let me get this, this, or this. Whatever I want. Yep. All right. And that's it for all the different actions you can do. Right. And so if you notice, these charts... Pretty self-explanatory. And they have it in the book. And they you have don't it in the have book. any symbols that you understand. Right. Uh, for the experience points, since you see that defeating monsters and you can randomly get experience, uh, once you gain your fourth experience point, your character is going to advance to the next level. And what that means is you put it, the experience marker back at zero, and then there is a section on your character sheet that has the experience symbol and you get to choose one of the effects that are listed on there which is pretty nice because you could either gain a food or you could gain two life or you could gain one each of a defense and attack so that's um, that's what you do basically when this cycles so like Jeb said four so one two three four back to zero pick one of these yep and then there are the crystal the the crystal section, which uh, we haven't really talked about, because if you, uh, I, I'm assuming they're not easy to acquire, but if you ever get them, <laughs> you are able to spend a crystal at any time. However, you can only spend one per turn, and when you spend it, you can you gain the effect that is listed on your hero sheet. So just like the experience point, there's a section that has what crystals do. Okay, this guy's crystals. He can spend it for three life. Or, this has two dice and a down arrow. What that down arrow means is take two exhausted die, re-roll them, and put them back into your um, active die pool. So, and then the last thing that he can do is there is this hourglass thing. Uh, thing is, I don't know what else to call it. But basically, this one he can do during... In action. Mm -hmm. So he could literally spend a crystal and bump up his attack if he got, if he was like really lousy or to up, you know, up his defense. So I as assume not that's to die. just like an instant addition. Yes. It's not yeah. permanent stat increase. Yes. So it's, it's, uh, um, during an action, you can, you can do that. So that's what that means. There's a couple other symbols. I don't know if you can see them real good, uh, that you might come across. This is a re-roll uh, action. It is. It, it applies to one of your active die, not your exhausted die. This is recovering your your die back 
to here, if it's with the arrow, that means you re-roll it and then put it back to your pool. If a die has the question mark, you get to recover the die from the exhausted pool and place it on any face that you want. Yep. I don't know why exactly you wouldn't place it on a six, but that's probably what I would do <laughs> unless there's some things that uh, actually, you know, if you think about the game, they could throw in stuff that was actually better to do a yeah. one on, yep. and then that really makes that ability kind of cool. And then again, I just went over the hourglass. It's it's um it it's like Jeb said, kind of like an instant effect uh, that you can use during an action. In this case, this guy would use it during a fight most likely because it his are attack and defense. So. That's it. I mean, basically, that's how it works, and you're trying to get to the boss monster. We probably should talk about the boss monster real quick, just because yep. he works a little different. Right, so, so when you... Weeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee